And E United as well, known for their aggression. They're going to be chomping at the bit here to put Movistar Riders to the test. Cruz briefly switching to Zenyatta. Not sure what that was about, but it is going to be that standard triple DPS approach. Boombox on the Ana here on attack. Yeah, I wonder whether they'll try any triple support later on. That switch from Cruz... It's something that the Korean teams have been doing into triple DPS compositions, but they're soon going to find out that there's a Neptuno on Sombra on the defense here, and they have to alter their game plan. So, I'm mean, interested to see how United sort of adjust to this one as well and see what they're looking for. Right now, Shriek wants to go straight in towards the cafe here. Not too far, though. Just enough to try and force a little bit of reaction out from the side of Movie Star Riders. But Cruz goes down. He got a little bit too close to Finzi. And Valley Time just locked in a battle with Logics off towards the side. He's going to have to go and try and help out the rest of his team, but he's found a Dante with a bite grenade on him. He can't pick him up. What timing Dante keeps himself alive with his own Bionade, and now he's sitting inside the bubble. Neptuno used the EMP in the middle of that, got it incredibly quickly, but E United with a tempo nano boost coming out here. Boombox really working well. Immediate nano boost onto Sharik, and Valitaj is able to pick up a huge amount of kills off the, the damage that he was able to put out. Uh, yeah, I mean, they actually got their EMP real fast, but I don't think they actually got value out of that. Um, they, it's what Movistar is really good at. They're, they fall back, they peel for the team, they got the kill, but at United, they just have so much firepower, they brought it back. I just can't believe that Dante stayed alive in that situation. That was pretty insane stuff there. We also, there was a bubble from Colsty who, who dropped it on the upper level, I think, then he was able to just hide in it <laughs> on the lower. That's really clever stuff. Boombox moving over to the Zenyatta. Looks like they were just trying for the nano boost. Really fast nano boost on that first push. And now that they're in the street stages, they want to... I mean, Boombox is an excellent Zen. His, his fragging capabilities on the hero are amazing, but so is Swoosh on the Genji, and he is going straight into them, playing that defense very aggressively. Uh, Boombox is a freak of nature, though. That that shot on Swoosh is, is very, very hard to hit, especially after Swoosh had just come out of Dragon Blade. It was very hard to predict his movements. He still gets picked off. So that bit of aggression from Movistar or just Swoosh buys them some time. Yeah, bought him some time, but he, he's also dead now, and you will see United with a huge ult spike here. They're coming in with five ults, so they're, they're going to get free push here while we start as regroup. Maybe stars have got some tools to work with, but see what the end to do. That pulse bomb is going to be absolutely crucial as well. Forces Colsty to use his primal rage, and they've done so much damage to him. The focus fire absolutely massive. He's forced to disengage. They can't even use a nano boost on him. See if they can block the point either. And they've opened the door for. Oh, they've slammed it shut right back in his face. Actually, yeah, Finzi responded with a quick tactical visor there as well. There weren't defensive vaults really available to stop what Cruz was trying to do, but Finzi could just shoot him down out of the sky. Unfortunately, the investment of that ultimate didn't pay off really in, in the biggest way because United had so many other ultimates to rely on. Sharik came through the primal rage as well. He's still alive, dropping back to the payload. And E United, sure, they've trawled through a lot of those ultimates, but they've still got two more for this last fight. And conveniently, there's a defensive ult amongst them. This is so aggressive, actually, from E United, and the cart has just continued to move. And during the entirety of that fight, they weren't able to block the cart there. Now coming out to contest, but E United using these ultimates, getting decent value out of them as well. There's a sound barrier, but it only catches onto four players. They're the only ones alive from Movistar. Yeah, and you can see this position being forced by E United. They tried to back away a little bit, and now they're ready to return to the fight. They get the payload across the line, and Logics had to spend a scant second away from the limousine, and that was enough to grant E United this last stage. Mineral, they're really breezing through this very quickly. Yeah, they are. It's like I said, Swoosh made a great play. He killed three people, but they had to give out the free push because lost a member, and then you're getting a five old uh, United pushing into your face, and you know that's this is what happens. So is it even worth it? Because he gets a one for three trade, essentially. He gets three kills. Is it worth kind of going for that play on defense when you still risk losing so much for losing one player? It, it's worth it if you're going with your team and you don't die. If it's, if it's a clean wipe, then it's definitely worth it, but in, in this case, it backfired. Movistar well, Riders still on the defense. The United have slowed down a little bit. This is a very difficult portion of Hollywood to take. Swoosh, focus, fire. There was excellent. Unfixed on the high ground. Once you've got control of that, you've got great position in this final corridor. The high ground control for me, United, up on the causeway is so important here. They've baited aggression from Movistar Riders, and they have this high ground advantage, this angle now to turn against the Riders and keep moving forward. This is brilliant for me, United. They're completely decimating the Riders. That payload, you can see it, sailing closer and closer to the objective. Finzi has to jump through the spawn room out towards the other side and hope that Swoosh's Dragon Blade is going to be enough for Movistar to hold E United off. Here comes the Dragon Blade up top, unfixed, absolutely decimated before Boombox to pop off that ultimate. Movistars are falling though and they're falling thick and fast. Finzi's the only guy up top, he's not even going to be able to get to the payload. He was trying to get the high ground position with the tactical visor but the rest of his team was nowhere to be seen. That was real spicy, that last stage as well. So many teams can get snarled up on that last stretch so often there, but it definitely looks like Movistar Riders kind of dived into a trap that was laid for them. Yeah, exactly. It's like I said, you give that a little bit of control, 
you give them an inch and United take a mile, right? It's kind of like we saw Rogue against uh, Cloud9 on last map. It just snowballs out of control. Uh, you also saw uh, Movistars switching uh, to a composition without Lucio. Uh, they had an Ana, a Zen, and a Soldier. And when United are controlling the high ground that well, it's so hard for those heroes to like actually set up in a position where they can be effective, where you can get spam angles. Uh, United cleared that high ground for unfixed, and he was just standing there spamming for free, right? And you know. And even though that obviously, if you have that high ground in, inside of the uh, inside of the studio area, you can't really fire onto the main point of it. Yeah. It's not actually used for that. Yeah. In fact, e United wouldn't have been able to do anything with it if Movie Star hadn't actually gone for the engagement on the ground. They actually sort of didn't bother to try and do anything about the high ground. I think because they were up there. They sort of backed away, so they gave it to e United, and they willingly committed themselves to a fight when they knew that they were outmaneuvered entirely. Yeah, I mean, you can go for a dive uh, when uh, the card is close to the checkpoint, but as soon as it gets around that corner, if you don't control the high ground, you're basically diving into a sandwich if you want to contest the card. And, uh, and you just saw him getting staggered and staggered without actually stopping the card progress and uh, without getting a counter kill, and that's, that's how it went. So far, small sample size, but e United look way more synergized and cohesive than they have done at the beginning of this tournament. They kind of got picked apart by Rogue, looking to do the same to Movistar Riders. This kind of synergy, this level of triple DPS cohesion within their team, uh, the fantastic teamwork and excellent individual skill is what players have been talking about, they've been seeing in scrims. That's why they rated United so highly. If they peak towards the end of the tournament, that'll be perfect for them. Beginning the bracket stage, really important that they get this win. And they've started out well. Now, on the attack will be Movie Star Riders. And something we've often seen from these dive compositions is they, they have a really good attack, but then by comparison, their defense struggles because they're often trying to just play a stall game and they give a lot of ground for free based on the fact that they need to be going aggressive to be effective. Movie Star Riders, though, are taking their time. They're setting up, trying to get a bit of information, trying to use Dante as well to see if he can be the blunt object to break some heads in. Already, though, you can see quite deep. Kosti went well ahead of his team there and got picked off. And the Bionic Grenade's going to make it hard for Movistar Riders to get extra damage across the line. And that was really good from United. They all hide, avoid taking any kind of poke damage, make sure that they're hidden on the top of Cafe. As soon as they see Kosti jump towards them, massive amounts of damage piled into him. The focus fire and uh, decision of when they want to engage was perfect. Kosti perhaps slept, stepped a little too far over the line and got punished for it. What's the timing off there, Mineral? Is that what you saw? Well, the thing is, um, if you don't get a, a Discord and a perfect dive and an instant kill, it's so hard for Movistar Riders to do anything because they get out sustained, right? United are playing uh, Anana. Uh, and you saw that. They didn't have a clear Discord target. They didn't get the kill. And that Biotic Nade on the point there just completely yeah. got rid of all the early poke damage that Movistar had done. Yeah. And you know, Valtage is also excellent at uh, harassing the back line. He just double blinks in and shoots you in the face. So uh, he's very, very hard to play against as a sport. we got three kills on the, on the, on the attacking side here as well. Oh. That's filthy. Logic just walked straight into that one there as well. Pulse Bomb being delivered. Not really any big damage being done from it there. And Boombox is quickly going to try and respond here and keep Shariq nice and healed up. He's in a safe corner. He's got plenty of bodyguards to help him out now. And the bubble even dropped down as well to give him some extra support. Pretty big difference in how these two teams are going for the attack as well. Boombox, when they were attacking E United, uh, went for the nano boost. But Dante with a more defensive ultimate to engage here. And E United using the nano boost of their own alongside this tactical visor. Swoosh is going to get picked with it. It actually zoned everybody out as well. That's a stunning bite grenade as well. Because Swoosh had a dragon blade ready to go. But he knew as soon as he got hit by that grenade, there was no point. Finzi, some very sharp aim. He's actually made his way over in towards the cafe here. He's got high ground. He's not being contested yet. Sharik was too low to even try and get rid of him anyway. And now the transcendence from Dante to help them sustain. That's a good play by them. Cruz seeing if he can get any value out of this Dragon Blade into the back, but Swoosh has got one of his own. Pairs it up with the end of that transcendence. And it's a really nice, well executed push from Movistar Riders, Mineral. It, it, start, it started with uh, Cruz actually getting picked, and that was the cue for uh, Movistar Riders to go in. They actually were getting wiped that fight, but then I think they actually didn't contest Finzi, who got the high ground behind them, and that's uh, that, that you know allowed him to th bring the fight back. Yeah, I mean, obviously Unfix had a, a nano visor there as well. He was in a really good position, but fortunately Movistar were able to disengage two players. Swoosh had to fall, but by the time he returned, his team was in a far better position. Here. Yeah. It was Finzi making that play happen, to going up on that going up on that high ground, being uncontested. He he brought that fight back. Streets portion, excellent for dive-centric teams, especially on the defense, if they're able to establish position really early on. Movistar Warrant Riders didn't get enough of a wipe to be able to push the pressure really far forwards. That Pulse Bomb, though, forces Sharik to use his Primal Rage, and he gets destroyed. But Kosti went down with his there as well, so he opted not to use it. He opted just to accept the fact that they were going to get wiped by United there. They concede some time over, and the fact that 
we saw Cruz jump in to get that last kill there and not be punished for it is really important. The fact that United can do that, this is what Mineral wanted to see from Mobby Star Riders in the first half. Go for that kind of all-team dive and don't lose anyone. Yeah, or just get two kills and back out instead of going for the third one and dying. And that makes all the, all the difference. Boombox is going to be close to his ultimate. Heo, that's a nice boom straight onto Colsty. He's still got his Primal Rage to work with, harassing them into the back lines. Eonite are dropping players. Yeah, he unfixed now trying to respond to the fact that he got nano boosted there as well. I think the timing was a little bit off. I think he was waiting to get his tactical visor or didn't use it. So he doesn't get the full nano visor period out of it. You can see he's being harassed very heavily here by Colsey, but he's able to deal with him pretty comfortably. There's still more work to be done though. You can see Swoosh is on the payload with Fimzy. Unfix is gonna be very careful and he's caught out by the Helix Rocket there. Valley's heart is on the point, but he's gotta be careful as well. Tac visor coming through from Fimzy. It's time to take out the, the garbage and that's gonna be done easily enough there with the rocket connected with Boombox. Fins is going off. Yeah. The uh, E United DPS, the Hitscan DPS players, were also doing incredibly at the end there. Most riders have a huge ult spike here. They can actually close out this uh, checkpoint. Mort's never going to let me live that down, calling him garbage. But that's <laughs> 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 I was like, what's that? I was about to say trash. Like, what's a better way to say it? Gar garbage. Yes, that's <laughs> totally a different word. In fact, great stuff, bitch. Dragon Blade for Swish here as well. You can actually hear the sound barrier coming down now for E United. So it's interesting that Swish wants to play his Dragon Blade into this. The timing maybe wasn't there. Cruz has one of his own, but two players just fall right into the path of Swish. He takes Valley Tiger and Cruz out with one fell swoop. It's going to be a little bit more that needs to be done here, but Finzi left alive because he wasn't carved up by Cruz. Can now get back involved in the fight again after a brief breather. And Movistar, now they're on the roll. Swoosh has been such a clutch player for Movistar Riders this LAN, absolutely bringing it out when it mattered. All throughout the group stage, performing way above what we've seen on his online performance, and Movistar Riders are thanking him for it. They've managed to take control of the second checkpoint, clean up a couple of these kills, and uh, as soon as they respawn, they can start to progress in the warehouse. You see Mort starting to get a little bit loud inside the booth there as well. A solid defense there from United, and this is actually very fortuitous for them that they can set up in some fashion here. Even if they lose a fight right outside the gate, they can come back and reinforce properly to have another one and stall further time. Yeah, they were actually at the risk of getting snowballed there, but it back, it, it, uh, Moves the Riders were chasing uh, spawn kills, and they actually got wiped. They messed up. Sound Barrier comes in now for Lobby Star Riders. They're going to be able to move forwards. Finzi's also used his tactical visor, but that's been replied with. United have got enough faults on the board to be able to stabilize a little bit and block this card. Very aggressive defense from them. Different to what you see when the teams are running triple tank as well, where they take slightly more passive approach. And Neptuno has been picked fairly early on as well. And that's just more time being shaved off the cloth from Movistar Riders there as well. Valutaja has had a fantastic game on this Tracer. He's having a huge impact. And they're starting to get loud up in that booth now. You can see Boombox as well. This is where he's going to sit, just around the corner. Again, he wants to break line of sight as much as he possibly can and help out his team when he can jump in. Swoosh tried to chase Valutaja there, but he recalled out pretty quickly. Dragon Blades again from both Genjis. Swoosh wants to go for Cruz, but Cruz is busy dealing with Swoosh's teammates. Maybe that's the real idea, but he ran straight in towards Neptuno now. Only one Dragon Blade kill, but Swoosh was busy swinging it around in vain. He didn't get anything done with it himself. Yeah, the sword fight goes the way of Swoosh, but as the tactical visor is popped out of Unfix, they're forced to use the Primal Rage to go and get right up in their face. Calls to just body blocking it with his thousand health. And they're starting to move forwards, but United, all of this pressure, this team fight has been lasting for so long as they're so good at being able to engage, get a couple of picks back off so they don't get fully wiped. Again, using an ultimate boombox in with the Transcendence. This is so sick, yeah. He's keeping, e United are actually all half health. They were very low, and they decide to quickly mid-fight, go on the aggressive. They get boombox to bring the Transcendence in, and Valitaja finds another pick. It's Colsey this time to go down. Sharik is mildly overextended, but it doesn't matter, because Movistar already lost four plays in that fight and have to go for a complete reset with 44 seconds on the clock. Almost no time here. Mineral, do they have to change something up? Uh, it might be too late, but they could bring in a D.Va and try and uh, try and kind of stop the bleeding, right? And win a fight because right now they're just trading ultimates, but they're getting no card progress. It must be so frustrating for Movistar as well. They're throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at Reunited, or E United, should I say. This is going to kill me. But nothing is sticking thus far. Bubble down for Sharik there. Vinci does have a tactical visor, but he's taken very low. Quickly has to take cover. Valley Tarja is close, but he can't even find him. The frustration must be getting the better of Movistar Riders because Cruz is now compounding that tenfold. He's hitting the pressure points. Swoosh and Vinci dropped to his hand. He is having a massive improvement today as he was yesterday. And that's a big part of why. 
Reunited are going to shut the door in, in Movie Star Riders' face here. They're going to struggle to get to this payload. It's going to be a desperate move from Dante to get on there with a the Transcendence. Swoosh as well with the Dragon Blade. They're actually finding a couple of kills. Finzi's managed to use both DPS ultimates there from Movie Star Riders. And they get into it. E United, only a single player alive, but they finally broken through this choke point. Absolute knife's edge there. E United just, uh, the fight goes slightly more in their favor and they've locked out the map. But Movie Star Riders, they're still alive and kicking. They do not have a support ultimate, however, and Cruz is nearing a blade here, and they're nearing a Sinead ultimate, so I, I expect United to retake control here. They can get just dashed like waves upon rock if Movistar aren't careful, so they're sticking together, they're playing it safe, but eventually they're going to have to fight, they need to come in. Oh, that was Ooh. beautiful! Vinci gets just enough damage on Cruz before he gets the Dragon Blade out, and he's down. He doesn't even get the ultimate refunded. That's big! Valutaja now as well needs to step up in his place. Finzi gets on one's boombox there with a Helix rocket. And Valu sitting around in the back of the payload there. Neptuno, Finzi, Swoosh. Is this a thing? Is this actually happening? Movie Star Riders in Hollywood. Who would have thought? But they're riding his payload all the way towards the end. The United are forced into stall. It's absolutely going to happen. Of wow. course he's got the primal rage, but they don't even need to use it. That's unbelievable plays from Movie Star Riders. Fantastic performance from them. E United have got to be absolutely gutted. They couldn't hold them just outside the studio. That was ridiculous with the ultimates that they were retaking with, but you saw Fenzi hitting that Helix rocket in the face of Cruz, I believe. Him going down with that ultimate, that was huge because they lost most of their damage. And this is something that Cruz is known as a play that is favors a very direct Dragon Blade approach. Even without a Nano Boost as well, we saw it yesterday and this backfired on him multiple times. If, I think AKM was one of the players that managed to deal with him, or, or maybe in one of the earlier maps actually. It couldn't have been AKM, wrong group. But uh, yeah, he ran into that and you just saw he just got unloaded on completely. I mean, the bright side is for, for, for E United, they just have to attack yeah. again. They've got three minutes and 28 to do it. So the map is definitely theirs for the taking. This yeah. is really cool though. Movistar Riders realize they're not going to get a chance to attack. They absolutely have to full hold. It also has to be not a single tick given. So they're going for a composition where they can actually hold on the point. When you're running triple DPS v triple DPS, you're trying to hold outside of line of sight. You don't want to be taking poke. You have to stay inside the cafe or hidden a little bit or try and fight in different areas. And there's so much potential for playing the point. Instead, going for this triple tank composition with Neptuno, in fact, on the Soldier 76. And for Sharik as well, this is where it becomes a little bit difficult to actually have confidence when you dive in, because Swoosh is just going to stick his scrap gunner up his rear end and pull the trigger if he gets too close. <laughs> that it's sounds not nasty. Be good. You're like, it's nasty, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's going to look like that if he's not careful. So Sharik needs to be think, you know, very carefully about how he engages here on this Winston. This is a really interesting composition. The solo support, triple tank. Anna provides a huge amount of healing. They, I, I don't think they'll also be expecting it. They'll, Obviously be expecting some kind of switch up because the United were able to take the first point fairly easily the first time. Swoosh is just having a look around, slowly patrolling, seeing if there's anyone that he can grab his hook into. Actually finds a pick onto the tracer to start it off. Valitaja falls. And that's got to gut you. So it begins. Valley Tarja trying to get position there as well. And he's probably the best player to be picking off here as well. The hardest to keep tabs on at least for Movie Star Riders. Yeah, I mean, it, it wins them a minute almost, so they're on their way, but they, there's a lot of work to do, to be done. A whole minute, though, that's, that's pretty yeah. nice. I mean, Eonite has spent so much time posturing and then an unsuccessful fight. That's costly stuff here. I think they're monitoring the hook cooldown as well. There's Swoosh there. Threw out his hook, missed Valutage at that time, and Cruz applies a little bit of pressure. Swoosh has got to be careful. And Logix actually falls the Tracer 1v run around the flank area. And he dies. The ultimates on these tanks as well. There hasn't been that much generation. Neptune again pressured in the back and a punch to the face and he's down. There's no way he's going to come back from that one. Dante tried desperately to keep alive with a biotic grenade, but no, it's happening. It's inexorable. It's E United pushing straight on through Valley with a double pulse bump kill. And it was a tanky meatball composition for Movie Star Riders, but much easier to stick a pulse bump to their face and send them back to the pavilion. First map, E United.